Good morning, Ali. Good morning, Herman. Right. Yes. Another <clears throat> remote one. <laughs> Another remote one. Yeah. Um, so today I, I decided I wanted to talk about fear. Mm -hmm. And it's just, uh, it, it just came about kind of some thoughts that I had, um, some conversations that I had. And also just listening how often you hear the word or the phrase, I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that. Yeah. And then obviously I wonder about these things. Uh, I think, well, is that really what you're afraid of? Yeah. Or is that really something to be afraid of? Um, and then obviously I'm reminded about my favorite quote, the Seneca one about we suffer more in imagination than in reality. Yeah. And I, I, I recently read a, a beautiful quote um, by Will Smith uh, about mm -hmm. fear. He says, um, the only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. That's a really nice way of putting it. Um, in our thoughts of the future, because it, it hasn't occurred yet. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, it is a product of our imagination, causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. And then he, he concludes by saying, well, do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real, but yeah. fear is a choice. And that last part about fear is a choice, you know, that um, holds a lot of truth for me yeah. in terms of how we, how we perceive certain things. Um, <clears throat> and I feel that it kind of holds us back way more than it should. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's one of the elements in our below the line fear of failure. Yeah, so fear of failure is something that we, we speak about often, you know, don't yeah. be afraid. But for me, the, the, the concept of fear, you know, and how we, we give it so much more prominence than it should have in our lives, just in general, yeah, is, is more than just the fear of failure. So yeah, I suppose we can, we can argue that if you, if you kind of reduce it, uh, or distill it, um, a lot of it has to do with fear of failure. Yeah. But are there any examples that you can think of that you came across recently uh, where fear was kind of mentioned in a conversation? But just the phrase, I'm afraid of. Yeah, I'm sure. Isn't it a daily occurrence? I mean, for me, Living in South Africa, I mean, I live in constant fear of being mugged or hijacked. Or, um, and, and it's like you say, it's not, it doesn't, it's not going to prevent it from happen, happening by fearing it. I mean, there's obviously things you can do to, to be more aware and conscious and, um, of your surroundings and things like that. But being afraid is not going to make any difference. But that's a good example yeah. of one of the things where, well, you know, what there is... There is danger, there's real danger mm. involved in, uh, in some of the examples that you mentioned. Mm. And that is unfortunately a reality that we have to live with. Mm. And by no means am I saying, well, that's just your imagination, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't be vigilant or uh, <laughs> yeah. don't put yourself in a situation where there's a, there's a likelihood of something like that happening. Yeah. Um, but we also know from a recent experience that uh, that is something that can happen in a kind of blink of an eye. Yeah. Uh, you think you're really safe, and the next minute you're in a dangerous situation. Mm. So that's the kind of fear that I'm that I'm so conscious of. I am very conscious of or aware at the moment of this uh, concept of I'm not doing certain things because I 
tell myself that I'm afraid of something happening. Mm. And it's mostly meaningless bullshit if I think back at some, you know, at most of the examples. Yeah. Do you have an example? <laughs> yeah, look, so, so, so one that come to mind is that uh, a while ago I had the opportunity to, um, to participate in an activity and I didn't do it. And the reason I put forward was that I was, was afraid that I might hurt myself. Mm-hmm. And then I was able to play golf. I had a, had a really special golf game lined up. Uh, it wasn't an opportunity that was going to present itself sometime soon again. Um, but I missed out on an activity because of this, I suppose, irrational fear of hurting myself mm. and then I miss out on something else. So that for me is a very good example yeah. of what let, I, let, uh, I let fear miss me out on something that I'm, I wouldn't say regret, but geez, it would have been fun to participate. Yeah. So that's an, that's an example. I, th- I think about a lot of other things, you know, we, we're just in conversations, we talk to people and uh, I don't know whether it is taking on a new hobby or whether it is starting a business or whether it is moving to a different city or a different country or whatever. Mm. People are held back by some kind of fear. Yeah. Isn't that quite closely linked to anxiety? And that I don't know if it's a Jordan Peterson thing about anxiety is in the future and depression is in the past. Is that is it Jordan Peterson? Yeah, it was actually loud too, I think. Oh, uh, okay. That's yeah. It. If you're living in the past, you know, that's where depression comes from. Living in the future, that's where anxiety stems from. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we have to focus on living in the now, living yeah. in the moment. Yeah, I feel like that's quite linked to the fear because I think the fear and the anxiety are, are very closely linked because it's that fear of what, what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, the unknown. I, I'm one of those people who has an irrational fear of the unknown. <laughs> An irrational fear of the unknown. <laughs> yeah, and of, so I mean, one of my fears is flying. Um, no matter how many times I'm on an airplane, I'm scared that it's going to crash. <laughs> And, and I fly quite a lot, but every single time I fly, I have that same thought going through my head that what if it crashes, what if it crashes, and I sit there panicking and my heart rate goes up. Um, and yeah, it's one, for me, I know that that's an irrational fear because there's nothing I can do about it. There's no, I mean, me sitting there worrying about it isn't going to change anything that could happen. <laughs> so, yeah, that's quite an interesting one because by the time, when, when, you, when you sit there and you make the booking, mm. you also go through the heart racing and uh, yeah. is it as bad as when you're sitting on the plane or you kind of take off when you're on the runway? Yeah. It's far. No, it's when, I, as, it's when I go and I sit on the plane. Booking the flight, I'm, I'm excited about. I'm always excited about going somewhere different and traveling and whatever. But as soon as I'm on the plane, I start having that anxiety. And then... Uh, once it's actually going and we're, uh, well, if it's to Cape Town, if we're 20 minutes into the flight, it usually dissipates. And then about 20 minutes before landing again, it comes again. <laughs> yeah, so I wonder about, um, I mean, you speak of anxiety. Mm. Um, I'm just checking here, what's the difference between <laughs> fear and anxiety? Yeah. What would you say is the difference between fear and anxiety? Well, I think they're linked. I think anxiety comes from being afraid. Um, it's just more of a constant state, I think, than, than just having a fear about something. I think maybe it's having a fear and then overthinking that fear and that turns into anxiety. <laughs> mm, so, yeah. Uh, just quickly uh, kind of looking and saying that fear causes anxiety. Yeah. So it's, that causes the anxiety. So uh, if I understand it correctly, the anxiety is more like the physical response yeah. to fear. Yeah. Which is quite interesting. Um, 
look, I think, you know, I think, you know, for me, the central message about this is, is that we should, whenever we catch ourselves using the phrase, I'm afraid of, yeah. whenever you kind of have that uh, feeling of, whether it's fear or anxiety, um, it's kind of take a step back and ask yourself, you know, is this really something to fear? Mm. Uh, and maybe it's something, maybe it's a, a semi weasel word. <laughs> to this. Yeah. Uh, and just be a little bit more aware of when we use the, the phrase and when we say we're afraid of, are you really afraid of? Yeah. I think, I think if you do a little bit of a, of a count and, and a check, you will find that most of the time you're not even really afraid of it. Yeah. And sometimes it is just, most of the time, I think it's just about the, the not knowing the exact result. Yeah, 100%. So but I that's think, fine. yeah. Well, it's like that quote that we just said, it's kind of bringing your consciousness back into the present and in the, in the now rather than trying to anticipate what's going to happen or what could happen or what could someone say to you or how could this reaction go and whatever and try and just focus yeah. on what, where you are right now. That, that's another good example that you alluded to now is that thing about um, I'm afraid to say something because I anticipate about how someone is going to respond to mm. It's yeah. another one. It's 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 another thing that's uh, that's in our formula. You know, it's like speak up, uh, and then don't sweep things under the rug. Yeah. You know, um, and I don't. I, I can't tell you. Probably eighty percent of the time, when you ask people about why did you not speak up, it was about being afraid how somebody else will react. Yeah or being afraid that it's, um, it's not my place to speak to or speak about. Mm. And that is so irrational. And I think it holds us back in terms of our own growth, uh, in terms of our experiences. Yeah. Uh, and certainly for me, I, I'm going to stop being afraid. Me not too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to drive into a dodgy neighborhood and yeah. uh, uh, that sort of thing. But just in terms of my own awareness about where I use the phrase and then checking myself against, well, what is it really? Yeah. What is really holding me back? Is, is it really fear? Because what can happen? I, I mean, you can talk about these things. Tim Ferriss has a wonderful exercise that he does. He calls it fear setting. Where you instead actually, of goal setting. Instead of goal setting, yeah. he does fear setting. And it's a wonderful short, I think, eight-minute video about it. Um, where you go through this exercise. I mean, if you sit with a situation, you have to make a decision or make certain choices. Um, where you go and interrogate um, what, what are the potential outcomes? Yeah. Is it kind of looking at the worst case scenario and then being able to deal with that case? Um, so making the decision based on if that happens, you have a response to it or you have a way of dealing with it. Yeah, because I think most of the time, if you, if you look at it, especially in the, in the, in the, in the normal run of the mill stuff that we go, I'm afraid of this or, uh, I'm afraid of that. Um, those worst outcomes are really meaningless. Yeah, yeah. not actually yeah. that big a deal when you look at it in a bigger picture sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So then when you make, I don't know, some life-changing decision or whatever, there's a fear that goes with it. If you go and interrogate those potential outcomes, uh, you know, there's, there's the negative outcome um, and then there's also on the other side, um, <laughs> the, um, there's all the positive outcomes. Yeah. Potential positive outcomes that, um, that we don't necessarily think about. Yeah. 
but that's a great example of something to do. Uh, and uh, like I said, for me personally, it's about just being more aware and more conscious of when I use the word fear. Mm. And then myself, is that really fear? And if it's not, then I will look for the alternative. Yeah. And try to get to what the real reason is. What is holding me back? So I've, I've mentioned what is holding me back a number of times, and, and, and two are, are closely related for me. I really feel that um, it's, it's not fear, but something else is holding me back. Do you have an answer for that? What it is or what it could be? Or is it something that you are still kind of trying to get to the bottom of? No, look, I, I, think it, I, I think it will differ from, uh, uh, you know, in different situations. Mm. So in the example where I said, you know, where I said my fear was that I didn't participate because I didn't want to injure myself and then miss out on something else. Um, I don't even know um, if there was definitely potential that uh, doing the one activity, I could injure myself or aggravate an old injury. I was worried about my ankle, mm. then I had to off my scooter. Um, and if I, um, if I hurt my ankle again, then I would miss out. So, so maybe that was, not such an irrational fear, mm. but what was the likelihood? Maybe I could have, um, I don't know, I could have spent a bit more time thinking about what is the likelihood, you know? Uh, and through that, maybe overcome that fear. But then I think there's a whole lot of other things, whether it is, I don't know, silly example could be striking up a conversation with somebody on the plane next to you, which, you know, you may have overheard something and it sounded interesting and you think, well, I'd like to, to hear Way more in. about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, or speak your mind, you know, mm. or uh, take up a new hobby or anything, you know. Yeah. I'm afraid I might lose the money that I pay on a specific signing up for a specific class or a course yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And, and those are the things that I really feel is kind of holding us back. Yeah. Um, and obviously in some of the conversations that I have with with some of our team members, I kind of hear these things come up quite frequently. Yeah. Well, I, I think it, yeah. to not be afraid. I think for me, what I've taken out of this, and, and it's a challenge to myself, is when I, I do have to make a decision, um, I definitely think of worst possible outcome. But what, what you've just said is actually look at what are the best possible outcomes as well. And then you can decide when you look at both sides of the coin, whether it's a risk or a step or a decision worth taking. Um, because if that best possible outcome happens, it could change your life for the better or um, whatever the case may be, but it's kind of not just looking at what are the bad things that can happen, but what are the good things that can happen if I take this step or do this thing? Sometimes even the bad outcomes will lead to something good. Yeah. yeah. How often have you heard the story of some um, successful person where their journey started right there at that point where something bad happened. Yeah, yeah. Either they were fed from a dog or, I don't know, some real life-changing event. Yeah. That if you had given a choice, you would have said, I, I don't want that one, please. Give me option yeah. B. I don't yeah. Want that one. But that led to something magnificent and beautiful yeah. and wonderful. Yeah, so I have a bit of a, a cheesy and um, guilty pleasure. It's a Darius Rucker song called This. And it's all about all of the events that led him to where he is now, which is happy with his wife and his kids and whatever. And it's all of the, the traffic lights that he didn't make it through and when his mother died and all of the terrible events in his life. 
um, and how he's grateful for all of those bad things because it led him to right now in this moment where he's happy and he's satisfied. And, and I just thought of that now because it's like all the bad things that happen lead you to something fantastic something. Yeah. That's a great example. And I yeah. think it's so, so relevant. Yeah, yeah. And it's not being afraid. Take some risks. Make some decisions that could be life-changing. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, Herman. Thanks, Ellie. And we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Thanks.